take you to another level. Free me. We're at Foolish. Me. What up, everybody? Me. I don't know who else here, but appreciate you guys rolling through as, norm as usual as normal. <coughs> we got a special stream tonight. Sterling Hayes is joining us. And uh, I'm actually doing this thing for my parents' house tonight. I came home to visit them in Indiana. Um, so we're doing this directly from my mom's office right now. Um, I don't got my normal lights or my normal uh, my normal setting going down right now. We're gonna we're gonna do a little a uh, little different here. What up, Brandon? Hey, appreciate you stopping by. Um, getting Sterling into the chat right now, and we'll get that going as uh, as quick as possible. Uh, the dog is great, man. He's finally getting uh, getting potty trained. Not going to the bathroom in the house, which is great. Uh, he sleeps all the time. We we take naps in the bed in the morning. He didn't get up till eleven o'clock this morning. I had to get his ass up. I was getting up out the bed, and this boy would not get up. <laughs> it was hilarious. Uh, he, he's a lazy butt. Um, so he, he's a perfect dog for me because neither of us like lock, walking a long time. Take him out. He goes to the bathroom. We make it back up. Brayburn is awesome. I appreciate you asking, man. I love the dog. It was a rough go at first. It took him like, I don't know, three, four fucking weeks to get fully potty trained and really, really get that down. But it was work. It was worth it, man. Um, definitely worth it. All right, we got Sterls in the in the waiting room right now, ready to go. So how about we get him in and we get this interview started up? Um, admit him in here. Um, get this going the right way. Hide the view. Get him pulled up. Yo. What up, Sterles? Can you hear me? See yeah, me all right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I think I got. I think we got audio. Um, I think we got audio on on you and everything. Yeah, Everybody yeah. in the chat, confirm for me that you can hear Sterles. How's your day going, man? Shit, pretty good, man. I just got back from like a fucking forty mile bike ride. Dang, another one, huh? Yeah. Staying active. That's good. Shit get easier and easier every time. So I'm like, man. Get any war zone in today? Any war zones? Uh, nah, I'm no. off. 40 mile bike ride doesn't sound like you got too much time for, for any war zone. Damn. <laughs> oh, yeah. Hey, appreciate you stopping by, Drew. Thanks for subscribing again, man. Appreciate that. Thanks for, uh, for stopping by as well, Rosie. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you. Haven't, uh, haven't had, uh, had a real chat with you outside of the war zone or, or Call of Duty, so it's going to be nice to talk some hip hop with you. Are you originally from Chicago yourself? Yeah, from High Park, South Side. Uh, yeah, my, uh, both my parents went to High Park High School. Uh, my mom was like the school nurse at High Park High School for a bit, so I've been it's been my neighborhood for a minute, man. I was yeah, yeah. Been my you got a dog back there too. Yeah. What kind of dog you got? Uh, she's a, a poodle and retriever mix. Okay. Poodle. How old? She's about to be one. Nice. That's awesome. That's awesome. At the tail, but yeah. What do you uh what do you like most about the city? What is what about the city has most inspired your music, I should say? Mm. Uh let's see. I mean, you you know you're a product of your environment. So, I mean, just just off that uh an analogy alone, I feel like, you know, it it, it, it the, the things I saw made me have certain perspectives on life. Um like even just for example, riding a CTA. Like mm -hmm. anybody tell you like if you was riding a CTA or you know you was on a bus and train to school or wherever like you'll see the craziest shit like just just being outside man it, it just it's, it's, it's weird I, I tell a story all the time like uh I remember my first time staying out past like 10 p.m and I, I never forget the uh, the just what I was seeing just how the whole city just like flipped like it was like I was in a different city, and that shit was crazy, man. Just yeah, I love Chicago. It definitely molded uh, my artist, my uh, what I rap about, you know. Yeah. What made you want to go the hip hop route as opposed to a different form of art? And to be honest, like it, it's really hard to uh, get into uh, to any other genres because you know you can make like a fucking rock album it's it's, it's hard mm. uh I, I i personally 
um, get most of my inspiration from hip hop. Okay. Um, I do like rock, but I don't know. It's it's it's. Uh, I kind of just it just I just feel it. So, like when I write down music, I'm not really doing it like scientifically, like bar patterns and cadences, mm-hmm. and it's like it's it's is the I write my writing style is the way like a rock artist would write. Okay. But I think um, just the way the beats. I feel like is what got me into hip hop. Okay, cool. Like, you know, I can't, you know, sing and and, and do some rock shit on a, on a, you know, a, a boom bap beat. Well, mm-hmm. I don't know, you might, you probably can, but I don't think it'll sound good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Was there uh, anybody early on that you listened to as a kid that was like, okay, shit, this is, this, this sounds good. I could probably do something like this. Um. It, it was weird. So like, I was I, I listened to the radio a lot. Okay. So I was a kid. Like, it's not like how the radio is now. Like, all fucking political and people paying to get their boo boo ass songs on the. Yeah. <laughs> so like before it was it was it was it was it was all types of shit. So like I I, I never was buying albums, just because I don't know, maybe my parents weren't giving me money or. I didn't do what I needed to do to earn my allowance and shit. So I was like, man, if, if I couldn't stream it or listen to it for free, like I wasn't listening to it. So like, I was like, my iPod was full of singles. So that that's really how I started listening to every genre. Cause okay. like I was, you know, once, once the radio station, cause I think in the cars you had six stations that you can uh, save or like six to eight. Yeah. And, have a different genre, like whenever a commercial will come on, next station. And you'd be like, oh, damn, what is this? And yeah, so that's how I really got into everything. But hip hop, I think Bump J and like <laughs> really got me into hip hop, like Kanye, Bump J, just Chicago artists, you know, because um, I, I was more like a pop and rock fan first. Well, just a radio guy. Like, whatever's on the radio, that's what I... Like, I'm the do- type of guy that listens to one song a hundred times. Or, like, the same ten songs all day. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Um, I just really, in the last five years, started listening to people's bodies of work. You know? Mm-hmm. So um, yeah, I would say Bum J and just and just being around hip hop inspired it for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what is uh what what's the what's your favorite part about putting together a whole project? Because um, flirting with death is just like, man, it's dope. It's like it's a, it's a cool ride. Um, it's like a, it's a dope experience. It's like a whole experience. The whole project. Yeah. Um. And it's definitely got really dope replay value too. It's not something that you're just gonna listen to, be like, "All right, that was dope." You're gonna not come so back to it, and it's gonna yeah. it's gonna inspire you, and it's gonna uh, you hear something different every time, which is something I really like about the the music on Talking Truth as well. Uh, you're gonna you pick up different bars and different things that you didn't hear on first listen, second listen, third listen, shit like that. Uh, so, what's your favorite part about putting together a project like that? Um, just treat just um feel because i love art in general so it, it has me feeling like um when i when i make these concepts uh, i can feel like a painter or i can feel like um, a, a, a book writer or a storyteller because you know i want to make sure i have a beginning middle and end mm-hmm. like, thesis statement like i do it like i was doing a fucking project for school yeah. you know um, like rough drafts and all types of shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, like that. That's pretty much my favorite part, man. Feeling like um, I'm I'm doing something else. Like yeah, you, this this song has beginning, middle, and end. Um, it, it, I put my emotions and my soul into it. Like I feel like I'm a painter now because I just painted a certain picture. Mm-hmm. Because I can't draw and shit like that, but I've always just like like all art in general. Yeah. So just kind of being able to take elements from the uh, other art forms, and uh, yeah, it's cool. Like even uh, Vic Mensa, he like, mm-hmm. um, like he 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 like almost interviews people when he works on his shit. 
Okay. Like it's like it just gets it gets real technical and real at at a certain point uh, in your career. Yeah. When you when you want to, you know, make that that album. Mm -hmm. uh, that's like a book, you know. Yeah. Uh, I mean, even like like a, a author of a book, like it's all the same. Mm -hmm. you know what I mean, or any art in general, your architect or everything. So um, yeah, I just like to connect like some Voltron shit. Just like gather all the. The, sh the all the source, all the energy from other artists and from the art around me. Yeah, and, yeah, and make it make something special. So that's fire. Uh, I got a question from the chat actually here. Um, who is the who is the person who's uh, spitting on the the neglect interlude? Um, he, he wants to know who's rapping on that. Uh, it's my homie James. He's he's incarcerated right now. Uh, yeah, that was he he before he got locked up, man. Well, he started writing a little bit. But man, his shit, that's how you know, like you can definitely learn that practice makes perfect and consistency because shit, he's been locked up for a couple, for like maybe three years now. Okay. What can spit, you know what I mean? Like he got good as hell, fast as hell. Way It took me seven years to get this hot, you know what I'm saying? And I'm still not in my prime. So like, yeah, that was, that was my boy, James, Free James. Yeah. Um. What is it like being in Save Money, part of a group like that that's got artists like Vic Mensa and you know people with Chance that are involved with a, a group like that? What what's it like being part of a group that has that kind of names in it? Uh, man, I, I just it's just it's like you got to pick. Like I don't know, it's 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 fun and shit like that. But like I've um, like a lot of those guys I grew up with. And like we didn't meet in the in the music industry, mm -hmm. like not like you know like YBN or ASAP Mob or whatever these other right people. right like we we like save money wasn't even a music conglomerate like mm -hmm. that was the name of our clique before I even picked up a pen or, or ever recorded a thought about recording a song yeah so but like I would say like being and having friends that are famous is 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 it's great it's fun it's you know, um, it, it kind of um, opened up a box, like Pandora's box for me. Um, and it kind of took away my um, concept of limitations. Mm -hmm. Like, so uh, just, just being in a crew that's always beating odds and breaking down barriers and being people that we weren't supposed to be like we really had teachers telling us we wasn't gonna be shit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so like yeah, just 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 that it just being a part of history. You know like like who wouldn't want that? You know what I mean? Yeah, so definitely. Just, just being able to be a part of history in Chicago, and you know like I don't need to be a part of the world's history and shit. But like, as long as I'm I'm part of this history of Chicago, I'm cool, you know. So oh, yeah, I, I feel like I got a Grammy or something like that. Hey, Chicago is like a. We kind of touched on it on a lot of the previous streams and like the more more recent streams, how intricate Chicago's community and scene is, and how uh, supportive of a of a community it really is over here. And I, I feel like Chicago really does kind of influence the world a little bit. So even if you don't think you are influencing the world, I feel like your your reach is probably worldly, man. Like, uh, yeah, I just I, mean, I feel yeah. like we we influence a lot of people, uh, Chicago in oh, particular. Yeah. So I think yeah. it's just cool yeah. to yeah. say so that. that yeah. No, I'm saying like I agree with you. Like I didn't think about it like that. <clears throat> um, yeah. So I mean, then we're all a part of history right now because Chicago is like you know the top three hubs for create for creativity. Mm -hmm. So like just even I, I feel like more so being born in this generation in this era is 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 cool in itself. Like regardless of even being around famous people or whatever the case may be. Oh yeah. Do you ever think about the music that you make, uh like while you're making it, do you think about it the fact that it's going to be timeless or the fact that it holds um, more longevity than a lot of the music that you normally hear because I feel like your shit can apply you know four or five years down the road where you, you'll hear a banger that got released a single that got released it's like alright that was hot but 
five years down the road is not going to mean shit. Right. So, yeah. like, what is it? How does it feel to you, or like, what does it feel like to know that you have an impact on people in the long in the long run? Mm, that's a good. That's a great question. Um, it, it feels good, um, even just having, even just having impact at all. Like, I'm just grateful for having impact on. Like some some people I've met uh, that were like just supporters or fans, um, you know, we we've talked and I've given advice and I've received advice. So just being able to make, um, yeah, just being it just makes me feel good. Like the the same way it makes you feel when you you know do something to community for your community or you know help an old lady carry her groceries up. Like you know, it's it's, it's just. It's a good feeling, you know, um, seeing seeing people happy and stuff like that. Uh, like being able to make people happy is, is, is a great feeling. It's a good job, you know, it's yeah, a fun definitely. job. Yeah. What would you say is one of the uh, the hardest lessons you learned growing up? Like something that fucked with you that you're like, all right, damn, that, that, that shit taught me a lesson right there. I'm not gonna let that shit happen again. Every time I went to fucking jail, <laughs> I, I learned a lesson, every mistake, I've learned a lesson, man. Um, yeah, I, I tried. I tried to. I try to. Especially, what's well, like? Well, when I get in trouble, then yeah, every every time I've ever gotten in trouble, I tried to learn from it and uh, and grow. Um, and I also hang out with a lot of like younger dudes, nineteen, twenty, and I I see myself in them. Mm -hmm. So like, man, it's yeah. I, I definitely was like and that's it shows me that yo like yeah we need to have grow from our mistakes like yeah i just i just take every learning opportunity i can and try to grow as of recently so yeah kind of piggybacking off of what you just said just kind of seeing those seeing yourself in those younger kids does that kind of inspire you a little bit more to be more conscious about what you're saying in your music or more um like you know just yeah conscious about your delivery of everything Absolutely. And, you know, I, I, I'll be honest, like it, it, it wasn't until I matured as a man, well, I didn't give a fuck. Like I was the youngest, I'm the youngest. So I didn't mm. care about being a role model. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, but I still have younger cousins and I still have younger nieces, younger nephews. And, and I'm like, man, like I'm a role model to somebody. Somebody's looking up to me uh it, it definitely makes um definitely it just controls my decision making for sure and um yeah that that that's pretty much it like yeah just seeing seeing them doing some of the same stupid stuff i was doing mm -hmm. is 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 definitely a yeah it's it's it's, it's just crazy man it is, it's, it's like, well, the, like the bad shit I was doing is not the same as what, you know, when I was 19, I wasn't doing super bad shit. Like I was just hella getting caught like stealing and shit like mm -hmm. that. But but then you, as you get older, you know, like being a thief is some of the worst the title you could have. You know what I mean? Definitely, yeah. Um, so yeah, so like I, it definitely influences the things I say and do. But like, I, sometimes I believe art is art. You know, it's okay to exaggerate, it's okay to lie. Like, I'm not like, you know, I don't believe that people that play Grand Theft Auto are gonna go out and steal a car. Right. You know what I'm Definitely. saying? So I, I, I do watch what I say um, for the for the people listening. I'm not gonna, um, you know, like, like I used to glorify like doing drugs and stuff and I stopped doing that because you know people were thinking that shit was cool like we're making we have power as trendsetters so like you do have to watch what you say and do for sure Damn, that's, but that's sometimes cool. it is art though like yeah you no know, you're not supposed to take all this shit literal you know what i mean if somebody said they take 20 zans in a song like you're not supposed to like that shit's not cool you know what right. i mean but like that's what's selling right now people are gonna say what sells and but yeah yeah I, I would say to all the older artists definitely um 
keep in mind well because the the title is influencer you know mm-hmm. like what rapper artist influencer all the same entertainer it's all the same shit. so yeah definitely watch what you say what you do because people are watching the kids are watching uh let's try to we set a good example I, I do believe in that for sure that's dope uh, shout out to Break Records Records out here in the chat. I uh, appreciate you coming through and, and uh, participating in the interview tonight. Um, <clears throat> along with Sean, Brandon, my mom's here too. She's got to be. I'm at her house right now. And <laughs> she's not tuned in. I'm going to be pissed. I have to walk down the hallway like, what the hell? I'm not watching my stream? <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Um, so I don't know if you've uh, seen um, any of the streams before, know anything about the uh, like what the tree represents for the Talking Truth brand. Uh, but I'm going to kind of correlate some of um, like what the tree represents with a few questions here. So for trees, uh, for talking truth in particular, the, the roots represent like core values and shit that holds you down, shit that's going to keep you rooted as a person and, uh, you know, give you a lot of strength. So what would you say are some of your core values that you try to try to instill in yourself and, and put out there every day? Um, so I try not to be judgmental. Um. Yeah, that's definitely that. Cause mm-hmm. I, it's been people that I used to bully that still hate me and shit. Like fifteen years later, I feel so bad. But uh, yeah, no, uh, try not to be judgmental. Like we were saying earlier, trying to um, be a- aware mm-hmm. of what I say, of what I say and do, especially when we do have the power to influence. Um loyalty teamwork try to tell the truth i know we all lie we all make mistakes but i I think you just try your best you know to be a to be a man or a woman or adult whatever um and then work hard so dope work smart too and hard work smarter not harder right um, the bot, so the body of the tree would represent like kind of the folks that you keep around you, your foundation of people, and they kind of hold you up and uh, keep you in check and help keep you stay up and supported and shit. So, can you just speak on like how important it is to have, like how dope it is to have that save money group and how awesome it is to be able to make music with your friends and have that that good foundation of people keeping you in check all the time? Oh man, uh, yeah, I, I think friendship is is um just a very necessary part of life um because yeah just just like the uh, certain words that like fellowship and um yeah i think it's just very important like even like just to have that because like if I didn't go to college i'm in college right now but i didn't do like the real experience so like mm-hmm. even just like I know like a lot of people, no matter what they say, you watch fraternities and stuff like, man, you just, you know, if you don't support what they do or say, but like you definitely support the brotherhood and um, hold, like people having people holding you accountable for little or small things. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, if you say you want to drink a gallon of water every day, like just having that, like, yo, where your water bottle at? This is it's, it definitely goes a long way. Uh, I think that friendship is very important. Um, yeah, I, I think like those accountability partners and having that aspect of brotherhood is, is necessary. For sure. yeah. Yeah. Uh, going up a little bit further on the tree, you come up to the branches after you get to the body of the tree and the branches would just be basically the experiences that you had in life. Um, so what would you say is are some of the coolest experiences that you've had come from your creation of music Mm. coolest experiences um i want to say performing being able to perform and actually like you know if you work on an album for a year and that 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 feeling when you're done um that that therapeutic feeling you feel um i yeah definitely definitely the like the therapeutic value i was i was able to and like 
well yeah like it's a therapeutic value and it was some money involved you know what mm-hmm. i'm saying like i got some money i've been paid and i've grown as a person like i was able to like be my own therapist um travel traveling yeah and that like because i'm not i don't really like all the hollywood and shit like that um so uh yeah that, I, w- I would say traveling the therapeutic value and um just creating a masterpiece like being able to say that you know that yeah being able to say that and just even having it's, it's probably maybe only one or two people that know the words to all of my songs and shit like that's even just that like yeah you know i remember the first time i heard people reciting my some lines i said on a song i was just like just yeah just just the experience bro um yeah i just did the experience because if you if you do it right man you can you just do it you do what you love and, and 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 maintain and survive so just just the op just being able to have the opportunity to even get where i'm at now was was good enough for me you know what i mean yeah so just you know, i got i got signed you know what i'm saying like this i was i was the kid rap in the mirror pretending like i'm performing you know what i'm saying with a with a bottle of toothpaste in my hand, like it was a mic and shit. So um, just just making some dreams come true and doing things I thought were not possible, you know? So, yeah. And, actually, and being able to tell somebody else they can do it too, that that's that was a benefit that I, I liked, you know? Because mm-hmm. I have other friends that are artists and I can be like, yo, you know, if I can do it, you can do it. You know, so yeah, that's cool. So that's awesome. Um, and then, so the last part of the tree, or the the last like representation, would be the leaves, and that would represent kind of the lessons that you've taken from everything. So, what would be one of the most important lessons that you've learned from making music, or some of those experiences you've had traveling? Uh, what has your music brought you in lessons? Uh, one lesson some lessons let's see what lessons has music brought me man i know one thing like being popular and shit is not as great as people may think you know um i thought it is it it showed me a lot of things that i thought mattered didn't matter Mm-hmm. Like I know a lot of artists who are fucking dumb rich, but not happy. You know, not anybody I know personally, but um, yeah, just it, it definitely showed me. Um, it, it it really clarified that everything is balance. You know what I mean? Um, so I know people that are rich but don't have the mental health, or people that have the mental health that are poor or whatever it's just it's um you gotta you gotta be yourself you know you gotta stay true to yourself basically whatever you're doing if you are a millionaire billionaire um yeah you you gotta stay true to yourself man like if you want to be a rapper and you don't like being popular or whatever like you don't have to be that like you don't just just be yourself you don't have to copy anybody. You don't have to do what's trendy and do what's cool. Um, yeah, be yourself. And and being a cool guy and all that shit, like, that shit's whack. Just be you, man. That's about it, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, let's see. I just had one in my head, and then I, then I, then I lost it. Um. I was reading some of the comments over here. We actually got some uh, some awesome participation in the chat tonight. I really appreciate that. Thank you, Break Records. Uh, I just wanted to touch on kind of some stuff you were saying. Mental health is key. We definitely need more public funding for that shit, uh, especially here in Chicago. I feel like we could uh, we we could definitely use some more funding of the communities out here. That would be great. Um, 
and and it goes back to what I was saying too. Like, man, you you can't be too cool to be like to go see a therapist or to go fucking, you know, you know, you need to cry, go cry. Like, call one of your homies. Like, yo, I'm 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 lonely, man. Can you hang out with me? Like, just this shit, you know. Especially in Chicago, like you people, you know, some it's like a well in my community at least is like a stigma that you have to have this certain toughness Mm -hmm. just in Chicago in general this is where you have to you know I'm I'm not going to the doctor like just 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 like small shit like Mm -hmm. you know uh yeah just I would say just make it cool to 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 take care of yourself you know what I mean like there's nothing wrong with that if you you know if you if you're if you love marijuana like there's nothing wrong with taking a little month break you know or telling your homie like man I smoked enough today you don't gotta smoke to every back where they get past to you and shit weird oh yeah um what do you uh <sighs> happened again. Had another one and lost it because I'm reading these comments over in the chat. I usually don't get this much active active in the chat, so it's dope to see uh, see people interacting and stuff. This is cool. Um, I, I guess I will stick with the the branded question. What does truth mean to you? We were just talking about staying true to yourself and everything, not needing to be like too popular or anything. So, what, what does truth overall mean to you? Um, man. I'm gonna I'm be real honest. Like, oh, well, I can I can I can say what it means to me. I think the the the, the truth, uh, it's is being free. You know, like, um, cause I I think like truth for me is a state of being, and it's not um like a concept for me personally. Okay. So like if if I'm I'm just being free, which could be you know like I was saying being true to yourself, mm-hmm. like you're not, uh, yeah, just being yourself, being free, man, like not um, being weighed down by the temptation and it's the whole nine, you know, because you know like I know you might be familiar with like the seven deadly sins, greed lust mm. all that like being free from that man it's that's the truth to me you know what i'm saying like the truth will set you free so it's kind of though the truth and freedom is the same thing to me mm-hmm. you know what i mean because if you're telling the truth you're not a liar you become someone that's trustworthy you be you can become free man if you're not lying because if you lie to other people you're gonna lie to yourself or vice versa mm-hmm so, you know, being being free means you're not lying to yourself. You're not lying to anyone else. You're not trying to be anyone else. You know, so you're living the truth. You know, talking truth. Hell yeah. Um, you were talking about, like, not being too judgmental of anybody um, previously as well, um, which is awesome. I think it's a great, great thing to live by. Um, so that being said, how... Uh, Oh my god, this is a bad night for me, man. Oh yeah. How do you how do you kind of apply that to like social media and not like not trying to live up to what somebody else is doing because I feel like we can just judge somebody who looks successful on social media and almost assume that oh shit, like that must have been easy for them to get there. All they had to do is post that, like man, they're living life. I feel like social media is it was bad it's been bad for me. Like I, I at the beginning of starting talking truth I looked at other music blogs at how far they were, and I was like, fuck, why am I not there? Like, I got this dope idea. This is great. I got people telling me this is great, but, like, what the fuck? I don't have, I don't have anybody paying attention to me. Um, mm-hmm. So I feel like it was really bad for me for a, cer- for, for a certain amount of time, and then I had to realize, like, you can't look at other people on social media and judge your status compared to them. So how, how does... Uh, how do you deal with that? I, I guess it's, it seems like an easy answer. Don't pay attention to it, but... You gotta, you gotta run your own race... Like I'll give you an example, like that I even from today, like you see, you know, everything's connected. So you see mm-hmm. what you need to see when you need to see it. Like like I was when I was riding forty miles, I did the whole bike path. 
like the whole Chicago bike path. And it's like, you got these people that's going 50 miles per hour on the bike and I might be going 10, but we still got, you know, 30 miles to go and I end up passing them, you know? Yeah. But I'm still going 10 miles per hour, but now you tired. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so you just got to run your own race. And like, I mean, well, how you think it was for me? Like, I got rappers that are, I mean, friends that are selling records, charting, making money, performing for sold out shows. And, you know, I'm, I'm going to get there with like, I, I'm like, shit. Uh, you and and it's, it's you have to have limitations too. Like I'm not about to be trying to get a million followers till I'm 50 years old. You know what I'm saying? You just go in there, and try your best. Oh shit! Are right, you go in there, try your best, run your own race? You'll get there when you get there. You know. And it, and it's also it. Hold on, let me. Oh shit, tweak. You good? Anybody else frozen or uh, is it is it just I was one frozen person? Had, I didn't okay. know the flash player thing just popped up. I'm not trying to update that shit. But uh Yeah, so I would just say run your own race and you get there when you get there, man, and the tables turn. You know, like these bogs or whatever you're looking at, like they might go out of business one day. Like you you might be have a million in the bank you could you know mc hammer was one of the first black artists to go diamond and he broke you know what i mean like mm -hmm. this dude was a millionaire so like you know your day is coming yeah but you got to work hard though you know it just there's not gonna be handed to you but like it's been times i was like man i'm not gonna rap no more but like i stopped doing that and it's like and that's when you and that's when you research that's that's when knowledge is power because instead of me trying to be like somebody else, I'm like, man, what do I have that other people don't got? So I, I'm going to school for marketing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So now I can rap and I can market my own shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it, it, through that disappointment, I was able to motivate myself. You know what I mean? Because like, yeah, it's just I'm like, man, let me try. Cause that's another way of attacking what I'm trying to achieve, you know, or like, yeah. you know, what has a degree in English, you know what I mean? And that's why he's one of the best lyricists. So is win your own race, man, and, and work hard and figure out what you need to do to get there. Cause using somebody else's blueprint might not work for you. You know, getting on, getting on TikTok and dancing and going viral doesn't work for everybody. You know, Definitely. Um, doesn't work for me because I don't make dance music. But I'm not going to start making it. You know what I'm saying? I'm just going to keep working hard. Yeah. You know, so that's it. That's dope. Um, what you working on right now? You doing? You come? We got a project coming out. Got any uh, EPs or singles working on? What, what's yeah. uh, what's Thrills doing now? Right, right now? Uh, like I was saying, I'm in school mm -hmm. right now. So. Um, I want to be a creative director. Okay. So like when I come to the table, I'm like, you know, I can help you with your marketing. I can help you in the studio, outside the studio. You know, I'm, I'm a good friend. I'm going to make sure artists don't do no stupid shit. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah, that I'm in school too. and then I'm working on the EP with my homie Richie. Okay. So we're about five songs in, and then I'm, I'm working on an album. Well, I haven't actually started working on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get in the studio with some producers and looking for beats. But um, I don't usually force my album concepts. I usually wait for them to come to me. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm having so much free time. I don't know. I feel like I need to force myself to to brainstorm. Um, but yeah, this this I, I have like a, a list of features and a list of producers I want to work with. Okay. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go down the line, and I can see what happens. But the EP is 
uh, almost done, I guess. I might, I won't put more than 10 songs on it. Okay. So, but this is all like dance and straight fun music, straight fun shit. Um, mm, okay, cool, cool. So, yeah. What, um, hmm. I had a question about the, the marketing and everything, and I, <laughs> damn, dude, this is a bad night for me tonight, bro. I'm, my, my apologies. I'm, I'm in a different space, so I feel, I feel, I feel weird a little bit. I'm not at my regular desk. I'm at a different desk, so. I'm in my train of thought all the time. Bro. I'm in a different headspace right now. Um, what would you, uh, what would you say are some of your favorite uh, producers out of Chicago that you haven't got to work with yet that you're trying to work with, possibly even on like the album or EP, whatever, a couple on that list that you're working with or working, hoping to work with. Um, this dude Kid Wonder. Mm-hmm. He does like a lot of Lil Dirk and um Love Fo. Uh, so Kid Wonder definitely was on there. I wanna hit him up. Actually we've talked, but he's one of those dudes where I got introduced to so many times, but like didn't like we were supposed to do some shit that day, but now yeah. he probably don't remember who I am and probably probably have to remind him. But like, um, yeah, him, um, Peter Cottontail is like a really good friend of mine. We haven't worked together since okay. like 2014. So honestly, man, I've worked with a lot of producers that I want to work with again at this level. Because mm-hmm. a lot of people are giving me, like a lot of these Nico Seagals and Nate Foxes, and they're giving me beats that I wasn't even ready for. You know what I mean? And I, I don't have a problem admitting that. Like, they were giving me beats that I was not raw enough to rap on. You know, I still made some cool shit. But, like, you know, those those are Grammy Award winners. Like, those, that's the, they the real deal. So I, I want to work with these guys now when I have this, um, when I'm in the zone like this. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, all the, all the Nate Foxes and the Nico Seagals and, um, Man, yeah, shit, man. Everybody on the list, I've probably worked with, or is, or I or about was about to. Like even Smoko Ono, like I haven't worked with him for from years. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, and that's three, four years of me making music and recording almost every day. So like, I, it, it's it's almost like getting a, like I never worked with him. Yeah. So yeah, pretty much everybody that I've uh, Pluto Nash, we've been saying we were gonna get one in. Mm, like Thelonious Martin, I, I've I've rapped over some of his shit, but never put it out. Mm-hmm. Because like I said, I had a beat that I wasn't ready for. So yeah, I'm I'm I'm, I'm ready now. I want to get in, but but yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Um. It was a uh, one of the guys that I interviewed. One of the first guys I actually ever interviewed um, on the live setting uh, had a post the other day uh, about so uh, everybody possessing a certain quality of genius. Uh, so, what would you say your genius is? Like, what are you the best at right now, today? And what do you want to become the best at? My genius, I think, anticipation. Okay. Like. I'm always like very meticulous, very calculated. So I, I like, like you know, you you we play Call of Duty with me. Like I anticipate, like even with the sniper. Like I'm like, yo, dude was gonna stand right here if I do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm steps ahead. Um, so just and like I was playing soccer. Like I was, I played soccer my whole life. Like I was very good at one point, and mm. that all about anticipation because oh, yeah. you can't put your hands on the ball so it's not like you have to earn if you want if you want the ball you got to earn that shit like you got to know where it's going or who it's going to before it gets there especially you know some 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 of the people some of those like if you're you have to defend somebody that's way faster than you mm-hmm. you got to be able to outthink them so like yeah just just my anticipation like even situations in, in life like i'd be like oh yeah we about to go to this party. He about to get drunk and pass out. I mean, and that shit happened. You know what I'm saying? Or like, I, I can feel the vibe. Whatever, whatever, what they be calling it. Read the room and shit. All that shit. I can do that. You know, very, very good. That's dope. Uh, yeah. 
That's a that's an awesome quality to have. Honestly, <laughs> I think it's very underrated. What would uh, speaking of underrated, what would you say is one of the most underrated projects of uh, this year so far? Like in, in out of Chicago or just in general? Uh, both. One out of Chicago and then one not out of Chicago. Underrated. I'm gonna go Vic slash project. I'm V tape. Okay. Um. Well, I, I wouldn't say he that tape was underrated, but he, well, I I would say his his last the autobiography actually that that was one of my favorite. But it, it's it's really hard to say because like these I hate this new this new music, bro. I hate that shit. Like I still like I was telling you, I I still listen to J Rock's album. I like mm-hmm. shit like that. Like that was that was that's that's the one. J Rock that Redemption. That was one of my favorite albums. You know, okay, the last two years. I think he's super overrated, but he made that you know that win 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 win. Mm-hmm. That, mm-hmm. It, that was that was the one for him. You know that shit was on fucking basketball and NFL. Yeah. BT Awards. Um, yes, that was another example of running your own race. J Rock, man, he was the first one that got signed. Then you got Kendrick and Schoolboy passed him up. Then he come back and he neck and neck. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So, and that boy probably like 40 or some shit. So, um, yeah. Hell yeah. Good mm-hmm. advice, man. Run your own race. Go at your own pace. You're going to win eventually, man. <laughs> um, should I think I... Say what? Oh, yeah. The J-Rock was overrated, for sure. Yeah. Um, I think I really only got like one or two more for you, really. Um, what, what would you say success means to you? Uh, is, is it something that stays the same? Does success change over time? Have you attained it yet? What What is success looking like for you? Um, successful, man. I think when success first, well, I'm, I believe in God, so like I think everything happens for a reason. But like success is like, man, when when you take your last breath, like were you satisfied? Um. Cause I don't equate being rich to success and none of that. Um, like when you take your last breath, like were you satisfied? And, um, and what what legacy? What did you leave behind? What are people going to say about you? And uh, or, and or if you take care of your kids, are your kids taken care of, your family taken care of, kids taken care of, no regrets, and you know people should say only good things about you at the funeral. You shouldn't have, if you only got one person at your funeral, man, people probably don't like your ass. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Word. Um, well, this has been a wild year uh, as far as like the COVID shit, pandemic, police brutality, all all of that shit. What is, uh, what do you think has been the most important takeaway from this year for you? Man, I'm going to be completely honest, like, I, I kind of, I'm going to answer this simple because I don't want to, you know, it's a, it's such a sensitive subject. I don't want to say nothing that might offend somebody. So it, it just showed me, I'm not even going to say racism and uh, I'm, I'm going to leave it not black versus white, just uh, hate. There's like I, It just showed me how evil the world really is, man. You know? Uh, and how some people like just really hate each other, bro. Like, um, yeah, man, it's 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 evil. I didn't, I just didn't think there's a lot of shit that I thought I would never like stuff that's not supposed to be televised that we're seeing, man. Um, yeah, it, it's just evil, bro. Cause I, I never really watched the news like that. I would like catch my my pops watching it and and get a little ear or some shit, but like going on my phone and seeing just straight dark, brutal, evil shit. Like, yeah, man. I, 
I'm I'm gonna just leave it like that. I Is there uh, anything, a lot of pain in my heart, bro? Anything that you do in particular to try to just like help rebuild your mental when you see something traumatizing on the internet? Because I mean, fuck, dude, you you see that shit on Twitter on accident, bro? Like you could literally see, like you said, you could see somebody fucking dying like right in front of your <laughs> eyes. You shouldn't like you shouldn't be able to see that <laughs> shit. That shit should not like have you like. It shouldn't be accessible to us as easy it is, as it is. So, like, like for me, man, there's been nights I couldn't sleep because of some shit I saw on the internet. Or like, so like, how do you, how do you, uh, how do you personally deal with that shit? Got shot and recorded they self. Like, I just got shot, y'all. Like, bro, go your ass to the hospital. <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, yeah. What was the question again? Uh, just how do you kind of. I guess bring yourself back down to reality or calm yourself down or like who, who is there anybody you reach out to that you kind of have chats with? Like how, how do you well, come back from that trauma? Yeah, if everybody is in, I hope everybody in this chat is over 21. So I just, I just smoke weed, bro. Or else I'll be, cause man, I've, I've seen some shit that made me so fucking mad, bro. Like, Man, yeah, it's, it's it's hard to say it, but that's that's medicinal marijuana. That, right. That's what I use, bro. Um, or some edibles or some some some, some, <laughs> some shit like that. And melatonin, whatever. Yeah. Uh, that. Um, or I vent too. You know, call my mom. Like, call one of the guys. I play play. Get on. Monitor Call of Duty and shoot the shit out of somebody. <laughs> um, man, man, Just try not to think about it. It's weird too, and it, it's and I also it's like a, a double blade, double edged sword too, because then you get the that feeling like you, and then you feel bad because you couldn't do shit or you can't really, you know, do anything. Mm -hmm. Um, other than like you know you can vote and you can. Do what you can, um, but like, just, just, just feeling that that feeling of just not being able to do anything, or knowing that this is this the systematic uh, issues don't change overnight, and and knowing that we might not see equality in the, in our lifetime, you know, like. Yeah world might be kumbaya at some point but like even knowing like man it might not be for 200 years until you know we're not hating each other over religion and sex and gender and what, all that shit like people are hating you for every fucking thing right now you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah this shit is crazy so yeah, just I, that that's really that 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 used to bother me a lot too just knowing um I'm, I'm I'm we might not be alive when this shit gets good or worse. Mm -hmm. Um but yeah, so I, I just smoke weed, man, try to take my mind off it, make some music or music like obviously, you know, create. Yeah. I think I think expressing yourself is good for yeah. everyone. You know, whether it's a journal or you want to, like, I know a lot of my homies that box, mm -hmm. like, they do martial arts. And, and a lot of those guys are, like, all my anger management homies, like, all the, all my homies who used to be mad as hell all do martial arts and shit now. Or, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Damn, so I should try that. I got an anger problem myself I'm working on. <laughs> I need to get in the boxing ring. <laughs> bro, get, get in the boxing ring, hit that bag, bro. Shit. And then it's gonna be some good exercise too. But yeah, I haven't worked out in fifteen years <laughs> on <A> purpose. <laughs> I think I think a hobby. I think having a healthy hobby is is yeah. good for me and it's good for everyone when they wanna. And shit, man, don't don't get on Twitter looking for looking for trouble, man. If you if you got a business, market your business. Your homie got a business, retweet and tweet it. We post it, share it, and just just get out of there, man. Yeah, uh, that shit is like the fucking you know, unsolicited news and shit, like a dark web for the news or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, I need to get my ass off of the Twitter. <laughs> that shit is just unhealthy as hell. Yeah.
I find it's myself not, on there all the time saying shit I don't need to say or just getting pissed about shit I could just not get pissed about. And damn, you know what, man? I think you just motivated me to get get off that shit a lot more. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a very conscious effort to try to do that. Hobby, <laughs> man. I know you like, but I mean, you doing one right now, bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Maybe you could do a, a fucking interview with an anger with an anger management person. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I don't know, creative to still be creative with it. But yeah, definitely get a hobby, man. We all need one. The older you get, more important. Oh, yeah. This shit, especially man, if you have kids and you won't be even even more angry. Cause now you you gotta worry about your safety, your kids' safety and shit. Um, it's like, man, if I had a kid, I probably wouldn't let him have a Twitter. Like, you might <laughs> see some somebody getting their head chopped off or some shit. Yeah. So. Well, shit, man. I, I super appreciate you stopping by. I really appreciate you uh, filling in us in on some more personal stuff and uh, answering some questions about that shit. You got any final thoughts for anybody? For everybody? Not anybody. Uh, nah, I'm, I'm about to definitely look and see who was all in here. I don't, I don't know who was in there. But uh, no, nah, I don't. Word. <laughs> Thanks. I haven't, I haven't had an interview. I haven't felt like a rapper in fucking a year and shit. <laughs> so I appreciate you for that. Hell yeah. I, I always ask for feedback at the end. Is there anything you think I could approve on over the interview? Or uh, is there any like content you, you want to see from Talking Truth moving forward that you think would be dope? This, I, um... I don't know, man. You, I, I, I definitely. I'm, a, I'm a big critic too. So like, I, 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 I fuck with your show a lot, bro. Oh yeah, I appreciate that. Um, it's, it's, it's up there for me. And if I didn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have did this shit. But, um, yeah, I, I, I actually, I just never told you, but I, I, I already analyzed how I felt about the shit, like. When you first told me about it, I like I like your um, like the, the 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 concept, the direction, and um, the graphics you use. I like that shit. The green with the the font and all that is dope. Oh yeah. Um. Yeah, fuck with it, bro. Yeah, you, you had you had some great questions. Did you have? Did you? I don't know if you wrote those down. Like it felt like, yeah, that's crazy, bro. I so so with people that I've talked to before, like Corey Stock, I'll mo- I'll more than likely like write some down that I want to like know to and an- like ask because I feel like the conversation can go off sometimes with them. <laughs> but yeah, the the people that I've never really spoken to or like talked to for the first time on stream, I don't usually write anything down. I could tell you were improv man. Yeah, I, I was very impressed. I had a good time. Um, I don't know how, how long has it been, like an hour? Uh, I've been live for an hour and three minutes, and I think I sent you the invite like five minutes after I went live, so probably about an hour, yeah. Like 20 minutes, man. I, I would have talked to you for a couple more hours, bro, so I think you right on, bro. I appreciate that, man, really. That's, that's awesome, man. Thank you so much. Uh, shit, dude, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll have to chop it up again soon. If you ever have any like music that you want to preview, anything you want to fucking get off your chest, no. That's what the platform's here for, man. Speaking your truth. Don't yeah. ever be afraid to offend any anybody either. Well, if you offend them, get out of here. I, Nobody I, gets offended I, over here. We're all here to speak our truth. So, um, so not so motherfuckers can cancel me. <laughs> <laughs> I feel that. I feel that. Love, respect, peace, and love. Call me whatever you want to. Where don't put hands on me? And we. Oh <laughs> <Hell> yeah, <laughs> I appreciate you coming through, Sterles. Uh, we'll. Chop it up in the war zone soon, soon I'm sure, and uh, we'll definitely have you back. Have a good night, and stay safe, man. Sir. Sure. All right, later. Bye. Hey, that was Sterles. My guy, Sterling Hayes. He's got some dope music. Go fuck with it. His most recent project is called Flirting with Death. That came out in April of this year. He's got a couple singles that released since then as well. Uh, appreciate you coming by, Corey. Thank you. Uh, Brandon, thank you so much. Uh, Rosie, always in here. Break Records came through. They had to go to work, but uh, looks like we had Sean in here. 21 Mark. Um, Drew, Foolish, of course. Foolish is always in here. I appreciate all you guys. Man, we're going to continue to do these interviews. We're going to continue to grow as a community. We're going to continue to grow through hip-hop music. 
I'm so fucking excited um, that I've been doing these on a consistent basis and we're getting some dope feedback. Uh, so if you guys fuck with it, please share it. We're trying to grow, um, you know, naturally over here like trees do. It's a it's a slow process. Trees are trees are slow growers, and it's true for this community as well, which is okay because it's all natural and it's all all beautiful. So um, we always, as always, appreciate you stopping through. My mom's been fucking looking at me through this office door every once in a while, freaking me out during the looking at me in the interview, trying to talk to me in the interview, and I'm like, what are you doing? I can't I can't do that. It is way delayed, yeah. She's in here, standing in here, watching the stream on her phone. No, I'm going to tell you. You want to say hi to everybody? Hi, everybody. Oh, there you go. She said hi, everybody. This is the Grinch. The Grinch? What do you mean? That part of the tree looks like the freaking Grinch. You guys know what she's talking about? The Grinch? Like the person, the Grinch? What are you talking about? Yes, this part looks like the Grinch. Dude. How are you talking about? It looks it like, the look like the Grinch's face. It doesn't look like the Grinch. It Rosie does. says hi. Hi, Rosie. Oh, well, you can see it in the chat. Dan oh, shit. So the, the, the messages pop up the same time oh. on, on our screen? Like, okay, that's wild. That's weird to see how it looks as a viewer. Anyway, next next Tuesday and next Thursday we've got interviews as well. We got a repeat interview, I believe, on Thursday. Here we go. We about to pull up right now. Uh, Thursday is the repeat interview, October 29th. I got Dre Isaiah coming on again. We had him uh, once before. Uh, he's going to be talking about some of his newer music that came out on Tuesday next week, though the 27th. I'm super excited about this one. This is a guy that I talked to probably when I had like 100, maybe 200 followers um, with Talking Truth to begin with. He he told me that he fucked with my idea a long time ago. He just started releasing new music again. He's a guy out of New York. His name is C434. We're going to be talking to him live. Also, next week, we're going to be on YouTube. No more Twitch. We appreciate everybody that's come through Twitch, signed up for a Twitch account, and done all of that stuff. Uh, can the inter can the interviewee see the chat? The interviewee cannot see the chat uh, because it is through Zoom. I think there is a way that I could share my screen or share part of my screen with them through Zoom so they can see the chat and what's going on. I'm, I've been messing with my tooth. I cracked a tooth today, so I've been, if I've been talking funny or messing with my tooth, you see me messing with my mouth. I've been, I cracked a tooth earlier, and it's really bothering the fuck out of me, so I apologize for that. Uh, but, yeah, i got to get a figure figure out a way to get them to... Be able to see some of the chat if that's possible. That would be fire. That's a good idea, Brandon. I'm going to note that down right now. Um, I appreciate you bringing that up. Um, and then, yeah. So next week we'll be on YouTube. Everybody, I'm sure, has a YouTube account already. If you don't, go sign up for a YouTube account. It should be through your Gmail. If you don't have a Gmail, I'd be very surprised at this point. Uh, it's 2020. Everybody most likely has at least a throwaway Gmail um, that they could probably use to sign up. Um, but it might be interruptive to the interview. It might be. We'll, we'll test it out. We might test it out with like Stock or Corey or somebody that um, somebody that would be kind of comfortable with testing something out for me like that. I definitely don't want to put that on somebody new or, or something like that. That's a good man. You guys, you guys got good ideas. I'm glad you're here in the chat. Help me think. Help me think things through here. Um, so yeah. Go get a YouTube account. We're going to be live on YouTube next week on Tuesday for the first time ever. Tuesday and Thursday every week. We're also going to try to do the Good in the Hood podcast um, collab uh, show for the first time. We, we agreed last uh, this week on Tuesday. Uh, if you didn't see the interview, that interview will be up soon on, on Instagram and YouTube. But we agreed to do a live show together every week talking about hip-hop music. So that's going to go down for the first time next week. I got the hiccups. So I'm going to keep it brief and short here. Please tune in next Tuesday and Thursday. Every Tuesday and Thursday we plan on having interviews. i got to get some interviews scheduled for uh, September starting next month because we only got two left and that's next week and I need to get my uh, head out of my ass and start scheduling some more interviews. So if you guys have any ideas of who you guys want to be interviewed, um, if you guys like know any artists uh, that you want like to see on here, you have questions for, Always hit the Instagram DMs. Always let me know. We appreciate you coming by. I'm heading out. Take it easy, ladies and gentlemen.